in this section, we are going to talk about um, different endocrine organs um, and then how um, they participate in um, releasing hormones. So in the last lesson, um, we talked about the importance of the hypothalamus, which was the president um, of the endocrine system and how it pretty much is the start of all um, the chain reactions. Um, so to keep that in mind, um, we also need to know that the hypothalamus is actually really small um, it's, and pretty much buried really deep into the brain. Um, and one of the main functions are to collect information from each of the body systems that are involved in the um, body. Um, and then they help to integrate um, the responses of the systems, especially from the nervous and the endocrine system, in order to achieve homeostatic balance in um, your body. Um, and they also help to regulate day-to-day um, -day, um, functions. Example, your metabolism rate, your um, heart rate, the level of energy that you have, your body temperature, um, the amount of thirst that you have, um, how nourished your body is based on the nutrients that you are t intaking, your blood pressure, um, what is in, um, in your blood, and things like that. Um, and so the hypothalamus has a very important job, not just in communication, but also in just regulation in general. Okay, so the hypothalamus key roles in the neuro, neural um, nervous system and the, epi, um, the um, endocrine system is that um, in the endocrine system, it makes the hypothalamus releasing hormones and the hypothalamus non-releasing hormones. Both of these hormones control the release and the inhibition of hormones in the pituitary gland. Um, so that is one of the main functions. And um, based on this, it can regulate um, emotions and sleep um, that we need, um, you know, um, for our body to be well rested, as well as for us to be well balanced in um, our, an emotional sense as well. Okay, the pituitary gland is very small. It's about the size of a pea, and it has two lobes. It has the anterior and the posterior, um, and they're located pretty much um, in the um, depression of your sphenoid bone. Remember, we talked about this when we talked about our facial skeletal system, um, and then it's also um, suspended um, from the hypothalamus itself by something called the infidibulum. So the pituitary gland um, has um, hormones and the hormones that are secreted by it function in two ways. They one, either um, act directly on whatever tissue they are targeting um, to um, have a specific metabol uh, metabolic response. Um, and then they also um, can stimulate other endocrine glands, which are the managers that we talked about in the last section, to release the hormones that they're in charge of. These hormones that get released um, stimulate other hormones that are called tropic hormones or tropins. Okay, so the um, anterior pituitary um, gland, it secretes six different hormones. And um, what it happens is it stores and releases these hormones when it's stimulated by the hypothalamus, um, whether to release it or not. So this is an easy way um, for you to remember the six important hormones that are secreted by the anterior, anterior pituitary glands, flat peg, um, so your follicle stimulating hormone, also known as or abbreviated as FSH, your luteinizing hormone, LH, your adrenocorti cortropin hormone, ACTH, your TSH, your prolactin, your endorphin, and then your growth hormone, also known as your GH. And we'll talk about that in a bit. Okay, gonadotrophic hormones. So um, your gonadotrophic hormones are your um, FSH and your LH. Your FSH, um, follicle-stimulating hormone, these are what is going to allow your eggs to um, be released from, um, this is what causes your eggs to release your estrogen hormone in females. Um, and then this is also what allows the sperm um, to be produced in the males. So very important in the reproductive um, area. Then you have your luteinizing hormone, 
Um, this is what is going to stimulate the ov ovaries in women to produce two important um, hormones, progesterone and estrogen. Um, and these are two hormones that are going to signal the release of eggs. Um, and they are also um, the hormone that stimulates um, interstitial cells of the testes to produce testosterone, which is one of the main hormones for men. Okay. So tropic hormone, four out of the six secreted by the um, anterior pituitary are these tropic hormones. These tropic hormones are going to act on the endocrine glands itself and not on body tissues. And we'll learn about the hormones that um, act on body tissues and not on the endocrine glands. So the first one is the ACTH. Um, which basically is simply, it stimulates your adrenal cortex in order for it to release steroid hormones. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Then you have your TSH, um, which is your thyroid stimulating hormone. Um, this is going to um, stimulate the thyroid to release two types of thyroid hormones, your T4 and your T3. Um, your T4 hormone, thyroxine, um, is secreted by your thyroid, and it's going to play an important role in things like brain development, digestion, uh, a couple other things. And then um, your T3 is pretty much going to play similar roles as your T4, like your um, met metabolic rate, digestion, and things like that as well. Um, and both of these are um, stimulated by the thyroid to be released. Then you have your prolactin. Um, it, this is really important in females because this is what is going to stimulate the growth of your mammary gland so that you can produce milk, um, especially when you give birth and you are going to nurse your baby. Um, these, uh, prolactin is also present in males. It's just that we don't really know what the job is in males, um, that the prolactin does. Um, another important hormone is called the growth hormone, also known as GH. Um, and this is going to act directly on your body tissue, not the glands. Um, and so this is going to be responsible for pretty much what it sounds like, growth and development of your muscles, the cartilage in your body, um, the long bones of your body. And what it does is that the growth um, hormone will start to break down fat in order to use for fuel for your body. Um, and usually when you start working out or exercising, um, the growth hormone starts to get released by your body about 30 to 45 minutes after you start a, a workout or an exercise. And um, it will start to take the fat and start to burn it for fuel um, so that your body can actually preserve carbohydrates that we intake um, so that the carbohydrates can use, be used by your nervous system or the brain for energy instead of the fat. Um, and this way you're not using up the carbohydrates um, and it can be on reserve for your brain to use whenever it needs to. Um, and about 80 minutes into your exercise or working out, your growth hormone will actually stimulate the fats and the proteins to be um, converted to glucose by your liver. Um, and this is done by the process of glucogenesis. I'm sorry, gluconeogenesis. Um, and this allows you to do really long strenuous activities like running a marathon um, or going for like a super long uh, hike or something like that. Pretty much something that your body needs a lot of energy for over a long period of time. Okay. Um, the posterior pituitary gland is um, an extension of your hypothalamus. So it doesn't actually produce any hormones itself. Um, and so people say it's not a true endocrine gland, um, but it does store two hormones, which are made actually by the hypothalamus. Um, and the um, two hormones that it stores are your ADH and um, oxytocin. And ADH is pretty much your antidiuretic hormone, um, which we'll get into in a little bit as well. Um, and, um, your posterior pituitary gland will also be involved in the secretion of the hormones, um, when it is, um, stimulated by the hypothalamus. Okay. Um, a, um, AO is another way to remember it, antidiuretic, antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. 
Okay, so every anytime you hear of a diuretic, it actually just means that you are um, producing a lot of fluid to um, pee out or urinate. Um, so when you have an anti-diuretic hormone, um, it's going to do the opposite. So rather than, you know, having a lot of urine, um, it's going to decrease the amount of urine output so that you have more fluid volume. Um, and so it, the hormone itself will go through your blood and travel to your kidneys in order for your kidneys to start to increase water reabsorption and then return that fluid back into your blood. The diuret a diuretic like caffeine or alcohol will do the opposite. Okay. Um, so people who exercise have increased sensitivity to ADH, so they actually have more blood plasma. Um, so what causes a hypothalamus to trigger ADH to release? So this is actually going to be under um, humoral control. Remember, we talked about this in the last section. So the ADH is going to be secreted when you have um, low plasma due to either dehydration or a lot of sweating due to an exercise activity. And then the ADH secreted um, is also going to be secreted when you have um, a lot of solid particles um, in your blood uh, start to become more concentrated. Okay, ADH also plays an important role in blood pressure regulation. So when you have an increase in blood pressure, this is when you have blood vessels in your body start to narrow. Um, this is causing this will cause tension in the wall of your arteries. Um, and so you're going to have an increase in blood volume because more fluid is being reabsorbed in the kidney and more sodium is also being reabsorbed. So therefore, if you have an increase in blood volume and you have narrow arteries, you are going to then have high blood pressure. Now, Alcohol, like I said earlier, also inhibits um, ADH. That's why you pee a lot when you drink a lot. Um, and it also, um, you know, a lot of people who have a hangover and stuff, they are they can get they get very dehydrated um, because they're urinating so much. Um, and they even have symptoms like super dry mouth, um, like the morning after they drink. Um, caffeine actually also affects your ADH, um, just like similarly to alcohol. And caffeine will also act as a diuretic, meaning when you drink, say, like a cup of coffee or a lot of caffeine, you actually do pee out um, most of that. Um, and, um, you know, that's that can also lead to dehydration if you're not drinking enough water um, as you intake caffeine. All right, so oxytocin is produced by pregnant women when they are in labor and they will continue to be producing a lot of oxytocin. Um, um, until they finish nursing their baby. Um, this helps with childbirth because oxytocin actually helps your uterus to start contracting in order to push out the um, baby. Oxytocin is also very important because um, it helps to, it actually is what stimulates your mammary glands um, in order to make breast milk. Um, and infants, when they start to suck in order to get the breast milk, it actually stimulates the release of oxytocin, um, which is really cool how that works hand in hand. Um, Pitocin is actually a form of oxytocin, um, but it's like a synthetic form and women get this um, administered to them through an IV, which helps to... In induce um, the delivering of a baby. So for example, I had to be given Pitocin when I went in um, because I was not, I was dilated, but I wasn't dilating fast enough. Um, and so in order for me not to be in labor for days, um, they had to give me Pitocin in an IV bag um, in order for my body to start dilating faster in order for me to deliver. And even with Pitocin, it still took 12 hours for me to go from 4 centimeters to 10 centimeters in order to deliver my baby. Okay, we're going to skip that part. Okay, so your thyroid gland... Um, is uh, located in the inferior uh, to the in inferior to the um, larynx cartilage. So you can see in the image, you can see your larynx at the top. And remember, inferior is below, so it's uh, located below the larynx cartilage. Um, this is also known as like the area of your Adam's apple at the base of your throat. Um, if you look at it, it kind of looks like a butterfly because of the right and left part of it, um, and it's located on the front part of your trachea. 
Um, so your thyroid is actually made up of two lobes um, that has uh, a center band called the isthmus that divides it. So you can clearly see that in the picture. Um, and it secretes um, the thyroid hormone and something called the calcitonin. Um, both of these help to drive our metabolism, um, which is super important. So your thyroid um, hormone is made up of two hormones. It has thyroxin, which is your T4, and your T3. Um, both of these control the rate of your metabolism and also help to produce body heat. There's also something called follicular cells in your thyroid, which help to secrete these two hormones. Um, and they are um, these hormones are pretty much made up of two linked tyrosines, which has an iodine atom um, basically attached to the tyrosine molecules. This is more this is kind of getting into organic chemistry, which if you go into any type of biology, you probably will have to take that. Um, in college, but this is just to give you a visual of what these um, hormones look like. Um, your thyroxine, which is your T4, is made up of four iodine, item, iodine atoms, and then your T3 um, is made up of three iodine atoms, um, and it is actually um, more stronger or powerful than your T4. Um, iodine is actually consumed um, from your diet and that's how your body gets it. Um, so if you've ever noticed <clears throat> there's certain salts that are iodized, um, that's pretty much where you can get your iodine from. If you don't have iodine and you only need like such a fraction amount of it, but if you don't get proper iodine from um, your diet, it can actually cause a lot of severe um, illnesses such as thyroid issues. Um, and you need them, um, you know, for growth, development and mature, um, just maturing in general to adulthood. Okay, um, so regulation of the thyroid hormone release. Um, the release of the thyroid hormone is controlled by your hypothalamus. Um, and this is going to stimulate your anterior pituitary gland in order to release your um, TSH, which will then stimulate your thyroid to release those two hormones, T3 and T4. Um, your TSH is also your thyroid stimulating hormone, just in case you don't recognize the abbreviation. Now, the um, thing is, when you have a lot of um, these hormones being released, it's going the T3 and the T4 hormones, they're going to trigger a negative feedback, which will then go back to your hypothalamus telling it and the pituitary gland that, hey, we have enough of these hormones being secreted so you can stop um, because we're good. All right, so calcitonin, this is going to be produced and released by parafollicular cells in the thyroid gland. Um, and this is going to be, uh, the parafollicular cells are located between your follicular cells um, in the connective tissue of your thyroid. And this is important in maintaining calcium homeostasis. So calcitonin, how does it work? When you have um, calcium levels are increased in your blood, calcitonin is released from your thyroids. Um, calcitonin causes <clears throat> calcium in your blood to get deposited into your bone, therefore decreasing the level of calcium in your blood because you don't want to have high amounts of calcium in your blood. Um, calcitonin also will reduce absorption of calcium by your intestines and your um, kidneys. Um, and then as we get to adulthood, um, our bones are going to act, you know, eventually reach the point of full development. Um, and so when you get to this point, you're going to have um, little amounts of calcitonin being released because there's really no place for it to deposit more into the bone because um, then our bones would just keep getting calcified. Um, and so your thyroid won't release as much calcitonin um, as you enter adult. Okay, so there are two pairs of um, your um, parathyroid glands on the posterior part of your thyroid. They, um, these four glands um, are really, really small. They're actually the size of like a grain of rice and they secrete something called, they secrete your PTH, which is your parathyroid hormone. Um, in order, um, are in response to low blood calcium levels. So when your blood starts to run low on calcium levels, your parathyroid glands are start going to start to secrete parathyroid, parathyroid hormone. 
um, the parathyroid hormone is going to increase the blood calcium levels in your blood in three ways. So they will um, stimulate the breakdown of bone tissue by osteoclast. Remember, osteoclasts are the breakdown of bones. Um, in order to release the calcium back into the blood. They can increase calcium absorption in the intestines during digestion to um, um, also increase the blood calcium levels in your blood. And they can do this with the help of vitamin D. Um, and then they can also stimulate your kidney to reabsorb the calcium from urine um, in order to get it back into your um, blood as well. So there's different ways that we can get calcium back into the blood um, to help with the levels um, in order to stay with home uh, in order to preserve homeostasis. Okay, so the thymus gland is part of your endocrine system and your lymphatic system. This is located under your sternum, which is the cartilage part in your chest, and then they are anterior, which is um, in front of your heart. Um, these are going to be bigger when you are a child versus when you get to adulthood and hit puberty, which then they will become a lot smaller. Okay, so your thymus glands secrete thymosin, which is a hormone essential for development of your white blood cells, which is part of your immune system. Um, and the specific white blood cells that they are essential for um, is your T lymphocytes or known as your T cells. Those T cells are important for your immune system. Then you have something called your pineal gland. This is literally shaped like a pine cone. Um, and we aren't um, very sure of its exact function other than its role in playing with um, melatonin. Um, melatonin is the um, is released when it's like super dark or when you're super, um, which allows you to get more sleepy. Um, you can, you've probably heard of people take like melatonin gummies or something to help them go to sleep at night. Um, but that comes from your pine pineal gland. Other than that, we're not really sure what the actual function of this gland is. Your adrenal gland is um, located on top of your kidneys. Um, and it's made up of two organs, your adrenal cortex and your adrenal uh, medulla. Your adrenal cortex is part of your um, endocrine system, while your adrenal medulla is part of your nervous system. Your adrenal medulla is stimulated by your sympathetic nervous system specifically. Um, your adrenal cortex actually makes up the outside part of your adrenal gland. Um, and it has three layers um, that secrete three steroid hormones, and we'll talk about what those are. Okay, so remember we talked about the flight or fight response that your body can um, kick into when you are threatened. Um, so this response actually comes from your adrenal medulla, um, and it does it by secreting two hormones, your epinephrine, um, which is the adrenaline, and then your norepinephrine, which is your noradrenaline. Both of these hormones are called catechol catecholamines, um, which are hormones that get released into your blood during a physical or emotional stress. Um, body's way of responding to the catecholamines um, release is pretty much what we call your adrenaline rush. Um, so this is when you have your increase in heart rate, your increase in blood pressure, increase in breathing. Um, and so a lot of people can feel this like, you know, right before like you go down a huge like roller coaster bump or like right before you have to do something that um, you're super nervous about. Um, and so, um, and this can happen like, you know, say you're walking home late at night and you're freaked out or like you are down in your basement and you need to turn off the light and jolt upstairs and you hear like a noise or something. Like all of these are examples um, of the um, release of, you know, epinephrine, norepinephrine, which stimulates this fight or flight response um, and creates this adrenaline rush, which is what that is. Okay, your adrenal medulla is um, basically um, when you have um, a lot of blood flow is going to the heart um, and your muscles are getting ready for fight or flight. Um, so you have a lot of, um, you have a high increase in your metabolic rate um, and then you also have a lot of glucose production by your liver. Um, so this is pretty much when you are like, 
you know, say you're walking home, you hear something in the bushes and you're like getting ready to like just run or like get ready to punch, throw a punch or something. Okay, so your adrenal cortex um, produce three groups of steroid hormones. These steroid hormones um, are made from cholesterol and lipid soluble. They are lipid soluble, which basically means that they can um, dissolve in lipids. Um, the anterior pituitary is what controls the release of the um, corticoid hormones, um, which are your adrenal cortex hormones. Um, and these hormones that are released from your adrenal cortex, uh, I'm sorry, from these um, corticoid hormones or your adrenal cortex hormones are the hormones that are super infor- important for um, survival. And we're going to talk about what these um, hormones are. So one of them is called your uh, mineral corticoids. So you can see that they're all pretty much going to have the corticoid um, ending to it. Um, and these are going, is the first, um, first of all, this is the first type of adrenal cortex hormone. Um, these are going to regulate your sodium levels in your body. Um, the uh, one called um, aldosterone, this is going to stimulate your kidney to reabsorb sodium and water from urine. Um, it will also stimulate to get rid of potassium. It will help to regulate your blood pressure. It helps to um, maintain your plasma levels, um, which is like the liquid form of your blood. Um, and it will all do this by increasing your sodium water that is being um, reabsorbed by the kidneys, um, which will then increase your blood pressure. Um, the aldosterone will also help to regulate the concentration of your blood electrolytes, which is your sodium and your potassium. The next one is called glucocorticoids. These are going to, um, there's two, first of all, there's two main glucocorticoids. Um, they are cortisone and cortisol. These both help, help to regulate blood glucose level by converting fats and amino acids. Um, and it's going to um, produce the glucose um, through uh, it's going to convert the fats and the amino acids into glucose by the process called gluconeogenesis, which we talked about earlier, which is what the growth hormone um, does as well, um, so that you can preserve um, carbohydrates, um, you know, for other um, energy that's needed, um, especially for the brain and the nervous system. Okay. Sex hormones, um, these, um, so your adrenal cortex um, is going to release small amounts of these sex hormones, um, like your estrogen, which is for female, and um, androgen, which is in your males. The specific androgen that um, the adrenal cortex will mainly make is your testosterone. Um, your reproductive organs produce a lot of sex hormones as well. Um, a lot more than your adrenal cortex actually does. But your reproductive organs will lessen the amount of hormones, sexual um, sex hormones that they make um, as we age. But your adrenal cortex will actually continue to make the same amount of those hormones throughout your um, life and it won't um, decrease in its amount. All right, so let's talk about our pancreas. Um our pancreas is this super long, thin gland that's located on top of your stomach, um, and it's in your abdominal cavity. Um, it functions as your an endocrine gland because of the hormones that it secretes that helps to control glucose levels, and it also functions as an exocrine gland by secreting digestive enzymes as well. The pancreas has something called islets of Langerhans which is basically um, made of alpha cells, which we're going to learn about. Um, and these are the cells that secrete um, the hormones that we're going to talk about. So the alpha cells um, in your pancreas, these are what are going to secrete something called glucagon in order to help raise the glucose levels in your blood. Um, the way that this works is that um, it goes through the plos- process of gluconeogenesis, which is the breakdown um, in order to get glucose. Um, and this is the best way that you're going to have fast results of getting your blood glucose levels to go up. Your pancreas also has something called 
beta cells, um, which are going to secrete insulin, which we learned about, you probably know about relating to sugar levels. So insulin is really important because um, it helps to lower the amount of glucose levels in your blood. Um, usually insulin will start to get released once you have a meal because now you're intaking a lot of glucose. You don't want to have a lot of glucose in your blood. So insulin helps to take that. Um, this is the opposite of um, glucagon because when you have glucagon, it increases blood glucose levels. Insulin decreases blood glu glucose levels. Um, now, beta cells um, are the only hormones able to get glucose levels into body cells, and it will also stimulate your liver to get um, excess glucose um, and store it as glycogon, which is um, fat. All right, let's talk about gonads. All right. So testes in men are one of their reproductive organs. This is encased by something called a scrotum, which is basically a sac that's located outside of the body. This is important in order to produce sperm and um, testosterone. Testosterone is important in order to have sperm production. Um, and this is how um, they are the ones that help to develop male reproductive systems. So as males get older, they will have more testosterone being produced. Um, and then eventually it will start to slow down once they reach like adulthood. Um, and this is what causes men to get like deeper voices, hairier, pretty much everything that comes with puberty. Um, and this is going to be stimulated by your luteinizing hormone, um, which is your LH, which is released from the anterior pituitary gland. Now in women, we have the reproductive organ called the ovaries, which is inside of our pelvic cavity. This is what produces the eggs. Um, this is also where you produce estrogen, which is important for female reproductive glands and also um, for us to um, develop secondary sex characteristics. Um, they also, in ovaries, produce progesterone, which is the other um, hormone that is important for women to have. Um, this is to um, regulate your, their menstrual cycles as well as to um, help promote um, puberty um, development. Erythroprotein is something um, that is other proteins. So we're going to get into talking about a couple other proteins that are important. One of them being erythroprotein, uh, erythroprotein which is secreted by the kidneys. Um, and this is to stimulate blood cell production. So super important. Um, prostaglandins are um, pretty much what you need to regulate smooth muscle cells that are located um, in your blood vessels and your respiratory passageways. They also help to stimulate the muscles in the uterus um, and also help to activate inflammatory response when you need it for immune response. Leptin is made from adipose cells or your fat cells. Um, they help to suppress your appetite and are super important for um, the, uh, in order for you to have energy in your body to produce that. And that's it for section 8.2. I'll see you in 8.3.